Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord again. Let's, let me try it again. Is it good to be in the house of the Lord again? Amen. 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 Giving God some praise up in here this morning. Um, and um, so it's good to have a nice, look good to see all the smiling faces. And, and, and God is good. See everybody back in the house. Jeremiah looking good this morning. So everybody's on, on, on the road to recovery. Isn't that something? That God is awesome? Yes, he is. He's awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead today, and, and um, don't worry about your, your Bibles, because I came from the New Living Translation this morning for, for, for this and thought that um, we look differently. But anyway, so we praise God. And if we all can stand. Let's go ahead and read together. That worked out pretty good last week. I like that. So we all together with the word. So if you stand if you can, and like Deke said, can everybody see? Okay, if you can't see, you can't see over there? You see through me? Okay, around. can you see around me? <laughs> no, 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 no. I want to move so you can see. So let me do this. Let me do this. How about this? All right. Then, hold on. No, I'm blocking the camera, right? Let me do this to the side then. It's God. Make sure all God's people can read and see His word. Hallelujah. Let's all read together. Praise the Lord. I will thank the Lord with all my heart as I meet with his godly people. How amazing are the deeds of the Lord. All who delight in him should ponder them. Everything he does reveals his glory and his majesty. His righteousness never fails. Let's read three again together. Everything he does reveals his glory and majesty. His righteousness never fails. He causes us to remember his wonderful works. How gracious and merciful is our Lord. He gives food to those who fear him. He always remembers his covenant. He has shown his great power to his people by giving them the lands of other nations. All he does is just good. I mean, excuse me, it's just a good. Okay. And all he his commandments are trustworthy. They are forever true to be obeyed faithfully and with integrity. He has paid a full ransom for his people. He has guaranteed his covenant with them forever. What a holy, awe-inspiring name he has. Fear the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. All who obey his commandments will grow in wisdom. Let's read 10 again, so that's so important. So important. Fear the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom. Isn't that something? Of true wisdom. Fear of the Lord is where, where the fear of the Lord is where wisdom begins. So if you want to be wise, first and foremost, do what? Fear the Lord. And all who obey his commandments will grow in wisdom. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for you. blessing and reading this holy word. Let's go to the throne of grace. Precious Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, you are just so awesome, Heavenly Father. We all fear you. Those that are within the sound of my voice, no doubt, we all fear you, Heavenly Father. Because we, the wisdom has started with us, Heavenly Father, just because we fear you. So thank you, Lord, for being who you are, Heavenly Father. You are awe-inspiring, dear God. No doubt about that. Your majesty is so glorious, Heavenly Father, that we, are, we have been created to worship you, Heavenly Father. And no other God will be before you, Heavenly Father. You are our Lord, Heavenly Father. And you sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross to help us, dear God, because we are fallen people, Heavenly Father. We will make mistakes every day. And so those who say that they do not make mistakes, oh boy, you know, that's a lie right there. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because we all fall short yes. of the glory of God. But we thank you for Jesus, thank Heavenly you. Father, the blood that covers us all, Heavenly Father. Yeah. So we all can be perfect just for that moment, Heavenly Father. And that's why we praise and worship you. No other like you, Heavenly Father. You provide all the food that we need, all the clothes on our back, and the shoes on our feet. Not to be cliche, Heavenly Father, but to be true. Yes. And this is the truth, Heavenly Father. And we're here to worship you. We look at this church, Heavenly Father, for those who are sick, 
and those who are shut in, dear God, is almost time to take it off the announcements, Heavenly Father, because we see those that are here that were struggling this year, Heavenly Father, that, Lord, you're bringing them out. It's a process, Heavenly Father. We see your work every day, Lord, dear God, and know, dear God, we absolutely know that you're still in the healing business, Heavenly Father, and we just thank you so much much for that, Heavenly Father, to bring us here in our right mind, Heavenly Father, to be here today and worship you. So we gladly come before you before the throne of grace, Heavenly Father, knowing that our worship certainly, Heavenly Father, would be like a sweet-smelling aroma, Heavenly Father, to your nostrils, Heavenly Father. So we thank you for just being who you are. We thank you for just being you, the great I am who I am. You say, who are you? You are who you are, Heavenly Father. Like you said, I am who I am. So we just thank you for being that, Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for, and we give you all the honor woo, and all the praise. Woo, in Jesus' name, woo, amen, 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 and amen. amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And we were having a show come up with our announcement. Well, thank you, hallelujah. Good morning. How is everyone this happy Sunday morning? All right. God bless you. And God bless you double dose for joining us today. We really we, we appreciate it. We thank you. We welcome you to a Helping Hands Ministry of Augusta, Georgia, 3003 Peach Orchard. Give me this control. Oh, there you go. Okay. Amen. Okay. Let's say amen, everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. And I want to, you know, say every, every morning, you know, Father God, you know, welcome our church family. We appreciate them coming in. And, and, and you know, we all have some, some place we could have been and wanted to be. So thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you out there in Facebook land. Um, if we have any new visitors, we thank you and we appreciate you. Um, well, as we give you a, a warm, extra special welcome if you're visiting us for the first time. So thank you so much. And um, now we're always, like I always say, we're always, but whenever we meet, we're going to be on the internet, okay? So if you can't join us, so really there's no excuse. If you can't join us, then join us on the internet. Um, as a matter of, and we have Sunday school every morning at 9. And this morning I was running a little late, so I told the pastor to go ahead. But you know what? I turned it on at 9, and I was driving and making little comments, driving. So, you know, you can always be with us. If you can't be here at 9, then be on Facebook. Be in your car on your phone at 9. And then bring a friend. You know, please bring, bring someone. I told you last week, bring a friend. And do I have any friends out there in Facebook land? I'm going to check in a minute. We have Bible study every Wednesday night at 6.30. And it's just absolutely wonderful. Sunday school is wonderful. Um, uh, Brother Melvin did a great job this morning. I think him and the pastor running parallel, talking about um, the Exodus and all of that. They've been running kind of parallel there a little bit. So, you know, come on, join us now. You're gonna really, you're gonna really get a blessing out of that. And we're gonna get a blessing for you being with us. And then we have to give the bond. It's G, uh, and that's the donation. If you don't know what's used in this plain term, that's the donation. And it's G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y dot com. That's the online. If you want to give online, if you don't have it to give, just please pray. <coughs> continue to pray for us. Okay? And I, like Brother Melvin said, you know, our sick and shut-in list is, is, is slowly dwindling, and we thank God for that. Because, you know, all healing comes from the blood. But, well, we, you know, and even though we're, it's dwindling, we want you to continue to pray for Sister Lynette and Sister uh, Brother Jeremiah. They're coming along, but and they're here. But you know what? Um, just continue to pray for our church family. We're small in number, but we're doing great things over here. With our even with our illnesses, we're still driving on and doing great things, and it's all because of the uh, to God. We want to give Him the glory for that. So just please continue to pray for us. Pray, pray for our pastor because he wears many hats, and and uh, we appreciate him. We want him to know that we appreciate. So please continue to pray for him. And if you want to be on the prayer list, please let us know. It's, it's just, we'll, we'll be gladly pray for you. I want to add my brother, my, my brother-in-law, um, Robert Austin, on, um, Pastor Robert Austin on the prayer list. He's going through some things. So please just um, add him to the prayer list, and we would appreciate it. Appreciate that. Um, and, and my little um, nephew, I talked to my sister yesterday. She said he's doing wonderful. 
So we thank God for that. Um, thank God for that. And then we're going to talk about, um, oh, if you, like I said, the end of the month is coming up. Does anybody have a birthday or anniversary that you want us to celebrate with you? We're glad we recognize you. Um, it would give us great honor to recognize you. So just let us know, and we'll, 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 we'll give you a little shout out. Now, you know, we have our fabulous upcoming events, the Rainbow Tea. The ladies have been working so hard, getting their tables dressed, and, and um, trying to get their finery. And um, so just come on out. And if you can't make it, send that donation. Because you know it's for the upbuilding of the kingdom. It's not for us. It's for us to continue to do God's work. So please, if you can't make it. But now come on if you can make it, because you're going to have a good time. We, we collect them door prizes, to, you know, just for um, saying thank you for joining us. If we can't make it, then uh, we understand and just look out for us the next year. And I think that's, um, I think, oh, yeah, the, the best table gets a prize, so I'm trying to get that prize. I'm not sure what it is, what Pastor's giving out, but um, I think he said like $1,000. So, so, <laughs> so y'all work, work hard on, I don't know, that's what I think. I mean, maybe he didn't say that, that's what I said. So, and, you know, and uh, like I said, next down the road, I'm not sure when, because we have to talk about it with the ladies, we're going to do our, our fabulous game night, but it's coming. So we're, we're small over here, we, we're doing the same things that they're doing out there. They're just on a smaller scale, but it's still a great thing. So, you know, come on out and join us. Um, you will be so happy, so blessed, so filled when you come through the door. And when you leave, you're going to be just so blessed. So just come on and join us, okay? God bless you. Thank you. Victory is mine. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. Let me see if I can get some volume for it. Yes, he won't miss 
all up this morning. Yes, yes. We didn't wake up. No alarm clock or anything yes. woke us up. No other person in the house woke us up. God breathed his fresh breath in our nostrils. Yes. And that's why we woke up to a oh. brand new day. Oh, so man. this song you are saying is, we just can't take these days to bring yes. for granted. That's right. That's right. This is the day. Yes. This is the day that the Lord has.
And I answered, oh, Lord God, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, behold, I will make breath into you so that you may come to life. I will put sinew on you, make flesh grow uh, back on you, cover you with skin. I will put breath in you so that you may come alive. And you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And, and I prophesied there was a, and as I prophesied, there was a thundering noise. And behold, a rattling and, and, and a shaking. Oh, it's something about when God begins to, to move in our life. And it says that bones came together, bone to his bone. And as I looked, and behold, uh, there were many, there were sinew on the bones and flesh grew and, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, son of man. Say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and breath came upon, came into them, and, and they came to life and stood up on their feet. An exceedingly great army we want to talk about well, what is the purpose of relationships. And we need to understand that, that relationships is what knit us together. And, and according to Ephesians 4, 16, it says, For him whom the whole body, the church, and all its various parts are joined and knitted firmly together by whatever joint supplies, when each part is working properly, causes the body to grow and mature, building itself up in love. So the whole body, and we need to understand this, the whole body depends on Christ. And all the parts of the body are joined together and held together, and each part does its own work to make the whole body grow and strong and with love. So we need to understand that, that why are relationships important? Because it knits us together, and it holds us together. And, and no man is a, an island. We, we, we heard that, that song years ago, when no man stands alone. And, and, and God never intended for us to be long rangers or, or, or long strangers. He, he desired for us to be joined together and, and properly knitted together. And the results of being properly knitted together is when we when we doing the things that God is asking us to do, we will build ourselves up in love. So there are, are benefits, and according to 1 Corinthians 12, 18, it says, But now God has set the members, each one of them, in the body just as he pleased. It's amazing because uh, we always have to look at, at what we want versus what God wants. And, and, and the Word tells us that he places us in the body as, as he pleased. And a lot of times that we we get that confused and we want to say, I'm only doing what, what I want to do. But God places us in the body so that this particular body or whatever body he places you in can build itself up in love. So God has set us in the body as, as he wanted. And where he wants us, and guess what? There are benefits that come along with being placed where God wants you. Say what, Pastor? I said there are benefits. When we are allowing God to place us in the body where he wants us, there are benefits that come along with that. And there's an opportunity to, to build a, a strong relationship. And if that's what it's all about, because we're not only trying to build a relationship with, with those around about us, we're also building a relationship with him. And we need to understand that it goes two ways. It goes vertical and it goes horizontal. And then as we begin to build and explore our relationship with God, he allows us to reach out and to touch others around about us. And so that's where we have that opportunity to build a strong relationship. And then we're going to look at the, at the principle behind it is, is what we talk about just about every week, discipleship. And becoming a disciplined learner, that means that you learn the lifestyle of, of your teacher and then you turn around and you teach someone else the principles.
principles of that lifestyle. And you're not saying follow me because I don't make mistakes, but you're saying follow me as the Apostle Paul says, as I follow the Lord. And as we begin to, to rely and trust in the Lord, leading and guiding us that those relationships that we begin to build are going to be solid and, and, ground, and grounded and, and rooted in Christ Jesus. We need to, to learn how to spend time together. And, and guess what? We find time to, to do those things that we want to do. We, I, I don't think you heard me. We find time to do the things that we want to do. And, and guess what? That, 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 that when it comes to building relationships, it's not a little bit easy. That sometimes you have to, to, to step outside of your comfort zone. And, and we have to learn how to spend time because guess what? That, that you find out that, that I don't like this and, and this person likes this. You find out that, that there's just a, a, a difference of opinion sometimes, but that shouldn't stop you from building a relationship. We learn to, to work around those things and, and we learn to work through those struggles. And, and believe me, there are gonna be struggles. But what happens is that when you spend time with someone or you begin to spend time with someone other than your family, that, that there comes a, a revealing of oneself. That people are going to begin to see you in a different light. And I think that, that sometimes that we want to, to disguise who we are. We don't want people to see how we really are. Oh, well, this is how I am. And, and I... <laughs> You know, when you think about the revealing of oneself, that that there there are reasons, there there are reasons why we we want to do this, <laughs> or maybe I should say there's reasons why we don't want to do it. <laughs> John 17, 21 says this: that they all may be one, and he's talking to to the Father, Father, that they all may be one. He's talking about us as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be one with us that the world may believe that you sent me. So there's something that benefits to the relationship is that when we can show the oneness, then people are going to believe in what we believe in. Because if we're standing on the word of God or the truth and the principles of God, that that's going to be infallible. That you wanna you won't be able to hide that that this is what I believe and this is what I'm standing on. And so these relationships, they hold us in place. And you think about that, you know, you they they, they have placeholders. <laughs> you heard of placeholders before, right? You go to an event and, and you might have to run to the restroom. <laughs> and you you motion to somebody to come and hold your place for you. You know, but these relationships hold us in place, meaning that you're not going to miss out on anything. That the relationship itself is a, is a growing, it's like a living document, it's a living part of us as we begin to build and work on establishing these relationships. In Mark 3, 13 and 14, it says this, And he went up on the mountain and called to him those he wanted to be with him. Guess what? Jesus called them that he wanted. And they came to him. And then it went on to say, and he appointed 12 that they might be with him, that they might, you know, he might send them out to preach. And there's something about that because I think we we think that that, that we're gonna have to go out. If I build a relationship, I'm gonna have to go out and preach. <laughs> you know, but guess what? That we're written epistles. And so we're preaching even if we don't say anything. That people are reading us. They're reading our lifestyle. They're reading what we communicate to them by our gestures, uh, by our, our, our just involuntary movement. They're, they're reading us. And, and they can figure out who you are. You don't have to say a word. And I'm always reminded of Peter, you know, when they took Jesus in and, and they said, you one of his. <laughs> now, he didn't say a word. <laughs> You want his. And, and, and he tried to convince them, no, I'm not. I, I don't know. 
And then the girl said, oh, yeah, I saw you. Wasn't you, that, wasn't you the guy that cut that, that, that ear off of that? <laughs> that wasn't me. And then he, he used some profanity. He said he cursed. I, that's going to convince her, right? <laughs> he said a cuss word. No. She, they knew who he was. You want to hear this. The same way that, that what happens with us, that when we become in relationship with him, and then we begin to form relationships this way, that people want to know who we are. We want to hear us. Because we're going to begin to, to do those things that are pleasing to him. We're going to, to work on establishing a strong relationship. Yeah. Amen. You know, we, we need to think about what, why we need to build these relationships. And I got down here my notes for, for nourishment. <laughs> That's iron, sharpen iron. So does a man sharpen the countenance of his friend that we're feeding each other. You know, we're, we're, we're causing each other to grow. We're, causing, we're challenging each other to reach deeper into the things of God. And if you were standing alone, it says that if, if, if it's better if you walk with somebody because if you fall into a hole, you got somebody to help you get out. And so it's, a, it's dangerous to, to be alone. And, and you try that traveling across country alone. And some of us have done that. You know, nobody to talk to. I know usually when I travel by myself, when I get to where I'm going, I'm horse. <laughs> Are you horse? And I'm singing and talking to myself. <laughs> the, 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 the crazy part is when I start answering. <laughs> I said, whoa, did I say that? But you're building these relationships to nourish you, to hold you in place. In Colossians 2, verse 19, it says, and holding fast to the head from whom the whole body nourished and knitted together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that, that is from God. So, so the increase comes from God. And we need to understand that. The increase comes from him as we reach out and begin to to form these relationships that God is the one that's going to act the increase because he's saying what? He's saying it's good. It's good. It's good that we do this. You know, we can say those you know, nice little quotes of the Bible and we say, oh, it's good when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. And we, oh, we like that one. You know, but when he says reach out and form a relationship because that relationship is going to be built and established on love, it's something that are we afraid of that? Are we afraid to to fall in love with? Ooh, I know I'm touching on some some stuff now. Are we afraid to fall in love? But God is saying, look, He got enough love to go around. Amen. And guess what? That we should, because if we we're, we're formed in Him, we should have enough love to go around too. Right. Ooh, amen. amen. You know, I, I had a. Uh, auntie that I think she had 14 kids, a couple of us. And, and she was so, I mean, she was so wonderful to all of her children. I'm thinking, boy, and knew them all by name, too. <laughs> Not like <laughs> somebody named all their kids George. Huh? <laughs> but, but, hey, that love was there. And it, 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 it's something about that, that, that and it, God allows the increase to take place. So think about uh, when you're in right relationship, uh, that, that it, it not only helps you, but it makes you stronger. When you're in right relationship, it makes you stronger. And guess what? It frees you. It frees you up to, to get involved in somebody's life. And, and we just don't know. Do we? we don't know where that person is that you might, God may have caused you to, 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 to stumble by their path. And we just don't know the impact that you're going to have in their life or the impact that that person is going to have in your life. We just don't know, but you know what? We can, we can decide and we can choose not to do it. That I'm not going to stop here. That's what we say. I'm not going to stop here. And so we keep moving, and, and what happens is we miss that opportunity that God could have used to help somebody out or to help you out. Right. But he's saying, look, and I want you to, to pause. 
I know my mother used to tell me uh, on this poem, slow, slow me down, Lord. Slow me down, God, that I may see the things that I don't see because I'm moving too fast. Slow me down, Lord, that I may take time to smell a rose. Slow me down, Lord, because I may never pass this way again. And we just don't know that the, the impact that we're going to have in somebody's life or the impact that they're going to have in our life if we don't slow down to take the time to visit. And it's something about visiting with somebody. Ooh, Jesus visited with people. And then they reclined. When they visited, they reclined. And they laid back. And they were eating grapes. I guess pigs. You know, they were munching and talking. And, and guess what? He built a relationship. And we know one strong relationship he had with Lazarus. It says, him whom you love. Because when, when, when the word went to Jesus about, about his friend that, that was sick, and he says, the one that you love is sick. Now, how did they know that he loved Lazarus? Because he built this relationship with him. And he showed us how to do it, too. And so, but there are stumbling blocks. And there's always going to be stumbling blocks to, to build a relationship. And the first thing, which is high on the list, is fear. Oh, boy, I'm, I'm afraid. And why, why do we let fear paralyze us? And, and we need to ask ourselves that question. Why am I letting fear paralyze me? Because we know, uh, if people know uh, who we are, guess what? Perhaps they won't like me. <laughs> you know, people see my unveiled face. When people see me for exactly who I am, maybe they won't like me. Or maybe people might think I'm not spiritual enough. Because, you know, we can put on an air of spirituality. And we want to project that, hey, we're, we're spiritual. But you know what? I want to know the real person. And, and, and I'm not trying to tell on myself, but somebody once said to me, will the real Ray please stand up? <laughs> I had to think about that one. And I thought the real one was standing up. You know, but, but sometimes we need to understand that, that we, we project a certain thing. And, and we don't want to, uh, I don't want to give you the air that I'm not spiritual. Or, or you know, so we, we want to keep you at arm's length. Because if I let you in this inner circle, then you're going to see me exactly as I am. And, and you know what, that's not a bad thing to let somebody see you how you are. It's really a good thing. How about rejection? According to 2 Timothy 1, 7, it says, For God, who has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and, a, and of a sound mind, that, that sometimes we feel that people are going to reject us. You know, hey, I'm, I'm trying to give you something and you're rejecting me. And you know, rejection is a, is a hard thing. You know, sometimes we have trouble coping with rejection. But guess what? We are given something. We are given power. We're given love. And we're given a sound mind. And that's something that we can pass on to whoever we're trying to build relationships with. That we can strengthen them and be encouraged by, by their growth. And, and then we're being encouraged by, by their involvement in our life. We just never know. How about pride? Pride comes in and sometimes we want to, to express or give off an air that that everything is all right. <laughs> you know, everything is all, oh, everything's fine. You know, but but can I tell you the truth? Everything is not fine. You know, I, I got up this morning and, and, and my head was in, not in the right place. And then we want to tell people that. And I was thinking about something I shouldn't have been thinking about. And, and Lord, I need some help. God, there was nobody there. I need to talk to somebody about where my, my thoughts were. Oh, God. I had a guy call me the other day, and he said, he said, Pastor, he said, uh, I'm thinking about committing suicide. And I said, whoa. I mean, I didn't really know what to say. I said, where are you at? Is what I asked him. Where are you? He said, I'm over here by the church. I said, oh, I said, do you need me to come over there where you are? He said, no, I just wanted to hear your voice. 
They come out there. Oh, boy. There's nothing special about pastor. You know, it's building relationships, reaching out beyond yourself, reaching out beyond your comfort zone. And then somebody will call you and they'll say, look, I was thinking about doing something wrong. And you might be the one that they just want to hear your voice. Lord, help us. What about inferiority complexes? You know, talking about my self-image. You know, oh, I don't like the way, oh, I don't like the way I look. Maybe God messed up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, one time I had a handful of hair. <laughs> and I was going to the barber, and I started losing my hair, and I didn't have no hair in the middle. <laughs> I had hair on the sides, and it still grows. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can grow hair. <laughs> And I went to the barber, he said, he said, you should save your money. <laughs> he said, just shave that stuff off. Say, <laughs> so we don't like the way we look. Uh, or we need, and guess what? We need to be able to accept ourselves the way we are. I mean, this is it. You know, God don't make no jump. You know, and, and we may have problems or, or things may crop up in our life, but God don't make no jump. And, and God says, look, you're beautiful to me. Amen. And if he says you're beautiful, then guess what? I'm beautiful. Amen. Amen. Oh, God, help us Amen. with that self-image. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and then we say, because uh, I don't like the way I look, I'm not going to be able to reach people. <laughs> but people, I mean, guess what? They said Jesus was comely. Didn't they say that? They said he was calmly. Meaning, I don't, what calmly mean to you? I mean, he was ordinary looking. I mean, wasn't nothing bedazzling about him. You know, uh, so that, that if he was effective, because what? He had a relationship with the Father. He said that I and the Father one. And so he reached out and he built relationships with those around about him. And, and, and it was good. Luke 4, 14 says this, that, that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, the anointed one, the Messiah, to preach the good news, the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to announce release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set forth and deliver those who are oppressed, who are downtrodden, who are bruised, who are crushed, who are broken, who are, who are down by calamity. You know, there's, there's things that, that just get us rocked, that shake us. And I mean, it shakes us to the core. And so what he said, he sent me to preach freedom or liberty to those who are in that situation. And guess what? He can send you to proclaim that good news to somebody that might be in that situation too. Because you might be the only God or only Jesus that somebody see. And they see it in you. And then you can be a help to them. And that's what he's talking about when he says that he's a present help in the time of need. That's what he's talking about. And so Proverbs 29, 18 says this, that when people do not accept divine guidance, and, and we've heard this one before, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. So when we, if we don't want to accept divine guidance, we, we, we're, we're just running wild. I was getting ready to say something like, people out there sowing their wild oats. I said, I was getting ready to say that. I just said it. <laughs> yeah. But it says, but whoever obeys the law is joyful. That, that we can find some joy in, in serving God and we can find some joy in doing the things that God is asking us to do. And I say asking us, and actually he commands us, but he does it in a nice way. And so remember that where there is no word from God, people are uncontrolled. But those who obey what they have been taught are happy. So guess what? We need to hear from God. And then that should be our, our number one goal and aim is, is to hear from God. And so when I'm talking about the importance of building relationships, Hear from God about building this relationship. Don't just build a relationship because pastor said we need to build relationships. Hear from God. 
And then when God begins to, to direct you in how to build and establish those relationships, then you're going to find that you can be happy. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. I can be happy about this. But we need to also recognize that we need relationships. You know, and uh, we don't, and don't mean to your own understanding. Because if you're trying to figure this out, we're going to talk ourselves out of it. I don't need that. You know, and, and I used to say it too, and probably you did too. I'm my own man. I'm my own woman. You know, and then we would, would fend off our, you know, things like that. That you, I can stand by myself. But what God is saying is, no, that's not what I'm desiring for you to do. And guess what? It's going to take work to make it work. It takes work to make it work. It takes work to make it work. It's just not going to happen because you, you think about, oh, I need to do this. But it takes work to make it work. And that's like in any relationship that you are trying to establish that, that you, the number one thing is communication. And take out the communication and, and then you have uh, some problems and some trouble in the camp. It says a man that, that has friends, guess what, will show himself friendly. And, and so and I, I once thought about that because I said, Lord, uh, I'm a friendly person. <laughs> and then I was talking about, and I made that comment because I was saying, Lord, I don't have no friends. And he said, no. That if you show yourself friendly, you're going to have friends. You're going to probably have more friends than you want. So we need to to open up, or we need to get loose. <laughs> I think that's the word. Let's get loose. You know, let's allow God to, to do what, what he's going to do. And then we need to learn how to, to follow up on, on, after we begin to talk to people, follow up and see how they're doing. You know, make a phone call. You know, go out to lunch. Uh, meet someplace other than in church. You know, meet somewhere and do something together. And, and, and you'll find out that, hey, this is all right. Y'all know Brother Hobbs. Uh, he called me up and he said, hey, you want to come down here and listen to me play some music? And I said, uh, where you going to be at? He's down there off of uh, downtown Augusta. And uh, it's on Saturday. I think it's like every, every other Saturday or something. And I went down there and, and sat out there and listened to him play music and sing. And, and I met a few people while I was down there. Wow. And that, and that amazing. But we have what happens when we do something outside of outside of church. And so there's some some closing thoughts that I have. That if God is building his church, <laughs> we're not alone. He says that he's building his church and the gates of hell will not or shall not prevail against it. So we're not alone. We're not in this by ourselves. That God didn't start something in us and then he just left us out there on the limb all by ourselves. He says, look, look, I started this thing and I'm building this thing and I'm going to be right there with you. And he says this, through thick or thin. And we need to understand and allow God to be God. God is bringing together a church that is and will be dedicated to him, to Jesus, and to the Holy Spirit. That's the Trinity. A church that's dedicated to serving and doing the things that's going to please him. And so guess what? There's going to be all types of people that's coming to the party. You say, who's coming to the party? All kinds of people coming to the party. And guess who's the link? Jesus is the common link in this party. He's the... He's the uh, the master ceremony of the party. He, he's throwing the party. And we know about one party that Jesus was invited to. And this was even before he did anything. He was invited to a wedding feast. And he was just a participant. He was just there as an invited guest. But his mother came up to him when they ran out of wine and said, they got no more wine. And she says, woman, <laughs> What I have to do with you, and, and and you know they misconstrued that. Some think that that was he was being harsh with her, but no, that was customary for him. It's not my time yet. Yeah, yeah. But she turned around and said to the servant, "Do whatever he says." 
So she knew that he was going to do something. How did she know that? Because she had a relationship with him, and she knew his character. And so there's an importance in building relationships because then you begin to, to understand people's character, what they're all about. You begin to, to know who they are and what, they, what they're capable or not capable of doing. You don't have to wait until you get in trouble to make up your mind about something. Your mind needs to be made up now that this is what I'm going to do. If I ever get into that situation, and then sometimes I rehearse that. Oh, I know what I'm going to do if this happens. The other night we was riding down the highway, and 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 I'm doing about it. I wasn't speeding. <laughs> and this car, <laughs> this car <laughs> pulled out. There was, there was a car that was there that pulled out around the car that was there, right in front of me. And Cheryl said, First Lady said, I closed my eyes. And I already knew what I was going to do. I did this, did that, <laughs> went around the car, and it was kind of smooth. <laughs> oh, I'm not embellishing. <laughs> My mind was already made up ahead of time. If I got into a situation, how I was going to handle that. I rehearsed it. I played it over and over. And the first lady said, well, I'm glad I wasn't the car over in the other way. <laughs> I was too. I didn't, I didn't rehearse it that part. <laughs> but you never know. So, but who's coming to the party? And guess what? There's a place in this body for everybody. And God, remember this, God places us where he wants us. Amen. And, and sometimes we want to know, why am I here? You know, why am I here? Because God desires for you to be here. He wants to place you where he wants you. And unless we take time to build relationships, we can never fully embrace how God determines to use us where he has placed us. Let me say that again. Because unless we take time to build relationships, we can never fully embrace how God determines to use us where he has placed us. That's why relationships are important because it's like glue that's going to hold us together. And we need to give God some praise and some glory about that. Amen. 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 And then we, we come to the part in our service where we open the doors to the church. Yes. And we make uh, what we are doing accessible to everybody. You know, not just some, but everybody's invited to this party. And he says, come, come, come as you will. Right. Remember, he went up into the mountain and he called those. He said, come, follow me. He called those he wanted to be with him. And so he may be calling you, come. And there's some place that I want to place you. And it doesn't have to necessarily be here, but he wants to place you somewhere. But if you, were, if you feel in your heart that he wants to place you here, that, that, that you can build relationships here, then allow him to do that, to cultivate something in you, to be a part of what we're doing right here. So the doors of the church are open.
remember this, whoever sows sparingly would also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously would also reap generously. If you refuse to give, as you decide in your heart to give, not reluctantly or uncompulsively, for God loves his children here, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, and in all that you need, you will bow. John 3.16 said, uh, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. <laughs> what, what, what an honor it is. For if you believe, you should not perish but have everlasting life. Everlasting life. God gave his only begotten son. There's a song that you can't beat God given. You just can't do it no matter how long. But we're going to be obedient and please God by bringing a tenth of what we have or whatever you can spare. It's not necessarily that to the house of God so that we can continue to serve the public. Father God, we ask you to bless this offering that we're about to receive. May it be used on the uplift and on your kingdom. It's in the name of mighty Jesus Christ that we ask you in his name and his name. Amen. benedictions coming out of Romans 15 verse 13. I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you will 